The news about Hansen going to the fifth floor had spread. As he approached to take the test, though, the guard asked that Hansen wait a day. King spirits and super creatures were unable to guard there every day. So the top dogs upstairs would have to hold a discussion and see who would best supervise the test. Unfortunately, there was nothing Hansen could do about that. So, he had no choice but to wait an entire day. The spirits, creatures, and humans on the fourth floor were curious about what was going on. Going to the fifth floor was quite the event, as it was a challenge beyond comprehension. What made it so remarkable was that a human was attempting to ascend. Humans were small and not worthy of much recognition in that shelter or anywhere else in the sanctuary. So learning the species of the challenger sparked the interest of everyone and everything there. Old Zhao, is Hansen human? I asked Chung Hu and Yep, he most certainly is. Wow, do you think humans can actually reach the fifth floor? I don't know, but Xiu Ping said he was unable to kill him. It would be great if he managed to succeed. In the palace on the fifth floor, three spirits and seven creatures sat before a table in deep discussion. Drybone, it should be your turn this time. Why me? Why don't you go? I am afraid I would kill the boy in one hit. It would be a shame to simply terminate someone who has managed to come this far, Baby Ghost said. You are much weaker than me. You actually think I'd be unable to defeat him? What are you talking about? We both know I am far stronger than you. You? Stronger? I'm going to beat the SH asterisk T out of you. Sure. Bring it, you dry, crusty sack of bones. Shut up, both of you, a female king spirit commanded. Immediately, Dry Bone and Baby Ghost went quiet and remained in their seats. The seven creatures that were watching the discussion now turned to look at the female spirit. Their expressions were full of serious concern for the matters they were supposed to discuss. This should be decided by Mr. Immortal, but he's practicing right now, so we can't disturb him. Should I make the decision then? The king's spirit looked into the eyes of each. The super creatures were fine with her making the decision, and Drybone and Baby Ghost said, Ching Jun? Yes, you should be the one to decide. Ching Jun panned the room until her eyes fell on Drybone. She told him, Dry bone. It is you who should go this time. Do your best and do not relent. Show us the true extent of your strength if you wish to share the sky fruit. Dry bone king said, Okay, everyone, prepare yourselves. We will go to another sky fruit in two days, Ching Jun said. The super creatures promptly left, leaving only dry bone and baby ghost behind. Dry bone, you aren't going to kill him, are you? Baby ghost asked. Dry bone answered, Mr. Immortal needs people. If that human is this strong, killing him means I am working against Mr. Immortal. Of course I won't kill him. What about Ching Jun? It sounds like she wants you to kill him, Ghost Baby said. Dry Bone said, It has been 20 years. She is still unable to get over that business with the humans. I won't adhere to her command. And besides, if the human really is king class in strength, I wouldn't be against having him sit on this same table as us. And if he is not as strong as we have been led to believe? Baby Ghost asked. Dry Bone laughed until his bones creaked, and then he said, Then I don't mind helping the mistress out? Hansen waited in the shelter overnight. Eventually, a king's spirit came to see him and bid that he go to the nearest martial hall. Many creatures and spirits had gathered there already. They all looked on Han San with grand curiosity, eager to see whether or not a human might actually be able to reach the fifth floor. A giant skeleton, clad in bone armor, stood inside the arena awaiting his combatant. He was four meters tall and looked frightening. His eyes were like red gemstones that were alive with an evil flame. Hansen entered the arena and observed his opponent. It was a skeleton, but not creamy and dusty like the average one. Its bones looked to be composed of jade, and they glowed. The bones of the skeleton had no gaps in between the joints, and it looked like a fire-forged warrior, straight from the pits of hell. You are the human who wants to enter the fifth floor. Dry Bone examined the human before him, wondering whether or not he had the king-class power he was expecting. As the red eyes peered at Han San, their brightness faded to indicate disappointment. His eyes were able to read Han Sen's fitness level. Hansen had the strongest fitness he had ever seen a human possess, 
and he was leagues ahead of every other human, but it still wasn't in the realm of strength a king-class spirit possessed. With a fitness level like that, I doubt he's of the strength Mr. Immortal is looking for. I suppose I'll just have to do Ching Jun a favor, Drybone King thought to himself. Yes, Han Sen answered. Drybone King wasn't going to waste any more time on Han Sen than he had to. He clicked his fingers and said, If you can last half an hour, you pass the test. After that, Dry Bone threw a punch towards Han Senator. The shockwaves it unleashed gave the punch the feeling it could sunder a mountain. Han Sen used his blood pull sutra to open nine gene locks. He lowered his red body and avoided Dry Bone's incoming punch. Dry Bone was a strong king spirit, and Han Sen's fitness wasn't quite up to the level necessary to reliably defeat the spirit. At the very least, he knew he couldn't fight him head on. Using his phoenix techniques, Han Sen took off airborne. As he evaded Dry Bone's subsequent attacks, Han Sen threw in a few hits of his own. Dry Bone was powerful, yes, but his speed and agility weren't enough to compete with Han Sen and his phoenix techniques. He didn't relent in his attacks, but each one missed, and that didn't look likely to change anytime soon. I can't believe humans have come so far and can be that strong. The surpassers who watched the fight were incredibly excited. Chiu Ping observed Han San intently, and he acknowledged no other human had yet to reach a skill level such as that. The spirits and creatures were all in shock. Han San was a nobody who had come from nowhere. Dry Bone King looked sour, and the flames of his rage were only being fanned with each missed attack. Suddenly, he threw off the chest plate of his armor. He placed his left hand inside his ribcage as if to rummage through a pocket. Then, he pulled out a bone. It looked like crystal, but it was clearly bone. Han Sen saw it, and it made him hesitate to attack. Dry Bone King smiled menacingly as he held the heart-shaped bone in his hand. Then, with his other hand, he knocked it with his fist. Young. It was like he was drumming it, and the acoustics it carried were infused with a strange power. Han Sen tried his best to resist it. But the power quickly accelerated and blasted into his heart, as if it had locked on like a sentinel beam. He started to feel as if his heart was going to explode due to the sudden influx of that terrifying and malevolent force. Han San was shocked by the quick turn of events. Dry Bone King was huge, and he had initially looked like a lumbering lug that was purely focused on strength. Han San never expected him to be so proficient with sonic powers. Young, young, young. Dry Bone King was like a Buddha on the battlefield now. He held his wooden fish tight and continued to strike it without pause. The strange powers violated Han Sen's heart and cascaded into it without reprieve. If Han San was an ordinary human, his heart would have been incinerated by now. If it was an ordinary super creature that was fighting Dry Bone King, their hearts would most likely have been torn in two. There was only one thing keeping Han Sen resistant to death. In the face of that vile attack, Dry Bone King's sonic powers were up against Han Sen's heresy mantra, and Curse of Immortality made Han Sen's heart stronger than all others. Han Sen was no stranger to having his heart suffer aberrant rhythms and be put under strain. This may have been worse than it ever had been, but Han Sen had the smidgen of extra resistance necessary to withstand the pain. His heart continued to beat, but each thump was like thunder. Blood began to ooze from his mouth. Dry Bone King is going all the way. He's quite the menace, and opponents with weak hearts really don't stand a chance against him. Baby Ghost thought Han San was a dead man, and it'd only be a matter of time before he fell. The audience was in disarray. Dry Bone King's drumming had affected those in the seats, and sacred blood creatures and royal spirits began to spill blood of their own. They piled out of the arena in droves to avoid dying. King spirits really are in a league of their own. There is no hope for humans to compete against them. The humans who had fled the arena were all in shock, and they could barely comprehend what they had just witnessed. It's a shame. Hansen most certainly has the power to compete, and perhaps even slay a super creature, but Dry Bone King has an unfair and wretched power. Everyone believed Hansen was extremely unlucky, having to face Dry Bone King of all foes. Xiu Ping had left the hall as well. He could no longer see what was going on, but he could still hear the solemn, heart-killing rhythm in the distance. 
The hearts of the audience that had fled continued to twitch and beat erratically, even as they stood outside the martial hall with the doors shut. I hope he doesn't die for me and you, Chen. Chiu Ping was worried. You don't want him to die? A female voice sounded behind him. Chiu Ping's face changed as a female spirit suddenly approached. I just think it is a shame for him to die this way. He could do a lot in the service of Mr. Immortal, Chiu Ping said, with a chilling voice. The spirit smiled, telling him, My patience has its limits. If you don't kill Zhang Yuqin, he will be the first person who dies on your behalf. His blood will be on your hands. And when I'm through with the brat in there, I'll move on and kill another human. On the account you are unwilling to kill Zhang Yuqin, I will mercilessly slay each and every human in this shelter. One life is all it takes. Chiu Ping, one life can stop the coming slaughter. Do it for the greater good. Chiu Ping was mortified, but it pained him to know she would do what she had just told him. Her logic was bizarre, but it was not something he could contend with. He had delayed this for twenty years, but even he could tell her patience was running far too thin. Men like Chiu Ping could not make a decision where lives hung in the balance, and at least one had to be sacrificed. If he was unable to kill his best friend, he'd be doing so at the cost of countless more. Why me? Twenty years of contempt had built up inside Chiu Ping's heart. I don't know. You fit the bill? It doesn't really matter. Having reasons to do anything is so petty, don't you think? The woman looked at him, almost uncaring. Chiu Ping was so angry, he drew his sword and attempted to attack her. The skill that had frightened Han Sin had no effect against that callous spirit. She simply deflected it with the greatest of ease. Chiu Ping then pulled out a dagger and tried to stab himself. If he did not have what it took to kill another, then the only other solution was to end himself. The woman did not try to prevent him, but when the dagger touched his skin, it stopped. She then grabbed him and teleported him back to the battleground. She threw him into the audience seats and forced him to watch Hansen fail and fall. She told him, This is the first person who will die, all because you are weak. Dry Bone King continued to drum the heart bone incessantly. Each sonic boom made Hansen cough more blood. Each beat was stronger than the last, increasing the amount of pain and strain Han Sen's heart had to withstand. Dry Bone was going to do this ten times. After the wooden fish's tenth strike, the damage each subsequent strike made would not increase, but Dry Bone King could still go on and on. And so far, it had been enough to suppress anything Han Sen thought to do. By now, he had only struck the wooden fish seven times. There was more pain yet to come for Han Sin, and on the seventh strike, he fell to the ground in a puddle of his own blood. His heart did not yield yet, though. Dry Bone King could read the fitness level of a person and evaluate what would be required to kill them. He had believed the sixth strike would be enough to kill Han Sin. Yet there he was, unbent, unbowed, unbroken. Much to his surprise, Han Sen had survived the seventh beat. This was not to say Dry Bone King was very concerned over the matter. He knew he'd kill Han Sen sooner or later, and that was that. After the seventh boom, the eighth followed swiftly after. It cracked a thunderbolt directly upon Han Sen's heart, or so it felt. Young. Han Sen's heart was thumping, and it felt like it was ready to leap through his ribcage and jump out of his chest. A pain like electricity surged through his body, dealing immense pain to every limb and every organ within him. Han Sen's skin began to crack. The veins were inflamed, making him look red like some monstrosity that had been stitched together. Watch his face. Not that you'll have to remember it for too long. I am sure it is to be replaced by even sorrier sights in the near future, the woman said to Chiu Ping. If Chiu Ping had the necessary power, he'd have killed the devil in his ear. But she wouldn't even allow him to close his eyes and so he was forced to watch Han San writhe in torture and torment. Gritting his teeth might have once been an outlet for anger, but it didn't help this time. He felt hopeless. He was to blame for Han Sen lying on the ground in a pool of his own blood. Let him go and I will kill Zhang Yuqin. Chiu Ping trembled as he muttered those ghastly words he never thought he'd hear himself speak. He knew he had no choice in the matter. The woman was practically demanding it and it'd be folly of him to resist much longer. It'd only cause more pain, particularly to those who were not deserving of an ill fate. 
He couldn't bear the thought of others dying in such cruel ways on his account. But the woman then said, You need to know who is in command here, you witless worm. That's me. You don't strike deals with me. He could have lived, but that ship has sailed. He will die because you are weak. He will die because you have always been weak. You are pathetic. You are the one who has gotten him killed. How could you allow this? The woman was colder than the devil, and her mind was more twisted than the flames of hell itself. Hansen sat up on the battleground. The pain had yet to ease, but despite the frantic torment his heart was enduring, his mind was as crystal clear as ever. The first few attacks from Dry Bone King had not been all that effective, but he noticed something interesting as the power ramped up. Hansen hadn't fought back because he had been mulling this discovery. Heresy Mantra came from the Evil Sutra. The Evil Sutra was not too different from the Dongxian Sutra and the Frost Sutra. Because the Evil Sutra was missing, the techniques themselves had been lost. Heresy Mantra was another recreation that was simply more complete. Han Sin had maxed out all he could with the Heresy Mantra, as Curse of Immortality was supposed to be the final tier of the skill. But when witnessing the attacks dealt through the Heartbone, Han Sin knew he could continue his practice of it. The Heartbone attacks attempted to destroy one's heart. For Han Sin, it made his heart squirm and thump faster than when he was in the midst of learning Curse of Immortality, and this told Han Sin there had to be a way to take Heresy Mantra farther. As Han Sin's heart pounded like a thousand drums, he focused his mind, trying to learn what Dry Bone King was doing. He wanted to be able to replicate it for himself the next time he was given the free time to practice. It was impossible to get the Evil Sutra back, but Han Sin could at least keep going with Heresy Mantra. He was going to unlock the fifth curse and make it stronger, no matter the cost. Young. When the ninth drum beat sounded, Han Sin felt as if his heart was on the precipice of being torn asunder. But his heart was like a balloon. The fierce powers emitted by the heart bone inflated it, but it was all quickly released in the break between each beat. Cracks and seams began to form with each beat, but they did not matter. His heresy mantra ensured that his heart healed immediately and was ready for what came next. The agony made Han Sen want to scream in joy, learning his heart was becoming better than what was required for Curse of Immortality. And so, he continued trying to record what Dry Bone King was doing to him. It might very well be the key to opening the fifth curse. Han Sen's enjoyment of the heart bone was starting to become apparent, and it made Dry Bone King frown. Han Sen had withstood nine attacks so far, and Dry Bone King was starting to have second thoughts. His judgment of the human's power might have been incorrect, he thought. His red eyes stared at Hansen once more. The young man's fitness really was not up there with king-class spirits, though. But it was not as if he could turn back now. Dry Bone King had to finish what he had started and push on with the tenth heartbone drum. I don't believe you have what it takes to withstand the tenth attack. Then, Dry Bone King amassed a frightening power in his left hand. He unleashed it on the wooden fish. Young. It wasn't only Han Sin's heart that had to suffer, then. The entire battleground quaked and was thrown into disarray. The entire stadium was wrecked as a plume of haze and dust began to cake the atmosphere and stifle vision. Xiao Ping's eyes possessed a fury like no other as he stared across the battleground. Beside him, the woman just laughed callously. But when the dust settled, Han Sun was sitting still. He looked undamaged. He wiped the blood he had oozed and stood up without trouble. How is that possible? Drybone King appeared to be suffering rigor mortis. He was unable to move, frozen through sheer disbelief. When he had struck the wooden fish the ninth time, Hansen looked damaged and under much duress. But when he was subjected to the tenth and final, most brutal pounding of all, he looked fine. He was unbroken, as Drybone King had not expected him to be. From the audience seats, Chiu Ping felt happiness in a way he hadn't for a long time. The woman, on the other hand, was at a loss for words. Hansen looked at Dry Bone King happily. He had managed to control the pumping of his heart, making it move in rhythm with the beat. With the power that flowed through Han Sen's body, his blood roared through his veins with the freedom and ferocity of a grand waterfall. His blood vessels had almost been unable to take it. He came very close to failing. With Curse of Immortality reinforcing his heart and blood vessels, 
he was able to inch his way over the threshold for withstanding Dry Bone King's wretched musical attack. Han San knew he couldn't listen to it anymore, since further duress could make his heart fail. He had to stand up and take advantage of everyone's shock to attack. He did this, though, thinking that the following strikes would continue to increase in power. He didn't know Dry Bone King had capped out on the 10th. Han Sen redeployed his Phoenix techniques and took off into the sky, speeding around Dry Bone King like a spitfire in the heat of battle. Dry Bone King frowned. He evaded Han Sen's attack and beat the Heartbone once more. Young. Han Sen's heart was like a fully inflated balloon, but much to his surprise and delight, the power released by Dry Bone King was no stronger than what he had previously endured. Dry Bone King pounded the Heartbone again. If it was any other person going up against Dry Bone King, their hearts wouldn't be able to deal with the cruel sound of the wooden fish. They'd be unable to fight, and perhaps even die on the spot with a hole where the heart used to be. Even the elites who could endure his attacks be unable to retaliate. They would still end up losing. But Hansen's heartbeat was in sync with Dry Bone King's malevolent tune now, and it could not affect him. Determining who the victor in this fight was going to be seemed an impossible task. Weird. Why did Dry Bone King's most powerful skill not work on that guy? Baby Ghost was speaking to himself, in intense observation of the battle. Hansen was not afraid of the heartbone, but his fitness was low, and he did not have Phoenix Sword and Taya with him. Dry Bone King's body was sturdy, and whenever Hansen punched the spirit's creepy skeleton, it was like throwing his fist into a pillar of steel. Dry Bone King did not have any organs to take advantage of, either. Because of this, In Yang Blast was useless. As Hansen wondered what he might do next, he suddenly heard the drumbeat of the heartbone move to a rhythm. It was a proper melody, as if playing in tandem with a phantom song. Hansen's heartbeat was disturbed once more, and it made him unable to successfully dodge Dry Bone King's next attack. He suffered a blow to his arm. As a result, he was sent flying a few hundred meters. He barrel rolled through the air to try to reduce the impact, but it still hurt. And as this occurred, Dry Bone King returned to playing his drum driven requiem. The melody was able to disturb Han Sen's heartbeat without trouble. Han Sen used his Phoenix techniques to fight again, wishing he had the Sun Xiang Yin had given him. If he had that, he could possibly fight back. But as Han Sen was still in thought, Dry Bone King leaped out of the arena and spoke Time is up, you have passed the test. Han Sen planned to keep fighting not expecting Dry Bone King to keep his promise. He did, after all, seem extremely intent on killing Han Sen. The woman's face turned green as she stood up and ran off. Chiu Ping felt great relief wash over him, like some cleansing tide. The thoughts that had gone through his mind in the past half hour were wretched, all dealing with what would occur following Han Sen's death. He was extremely glad Han Sen had actually managed to triumph and pass the test. Entering the fifth floor meant Hansen was a supervisor of the shelter. The woman would be unable to bully him so easily now, as he had to be treated as an equal. Everyone who was standing outside the stadium, having been chased away by the frightening heartbone, heard the sounds come to an end. They eagerly wanted to know the result. When they re-entered, they saw Hansen talking with Dry Bone King. It took their breath away, acknowledging a human had been able to survive such manic brutality. Dry Bone King brought Hansen up to the fifth floor. He introduced him to everyone, saying, We are one and the same now. If there is something more you would like to know, come and find me. Dry Bone King had gone into the test expecting an easy fight. He believed Hansen was like vermin he could chase off or crush underfoot without hassle. But he had great respect for the human now, and he wished to be friends with Hansen. Hansen took advantage of the offer immediately and asked, Brother Bone, do you know who signed Xiu Ping's contract? Dry Bone King knew it was only a matter of time before this was asked, and so he answered, it was Qing Jun. When Mr. Immortal is away, she is in charge. The super creatures only obey her. If you think of going after her now, it won't take much for her to get rid of you. Wait a bit, and I will help you soon. Thank you, Brother Bone. Hansen understood what he meant. Dry Bone King had subliminally informed Han Sun that Ching Jun was an enemy of his, as well. Go and rest. You've earned it. Two days from now, we can receive Skyfruit. Dry Bone King was leading Han San to a palace. 
Sky fruit? Hansen did not understand. Dry Bone King smiled and explained, Our mission is to collect the nuts from the sky fruit. The rest of the fruit can still benefit you too, of course. Whoever gets it first is allowed to keep it. I'll explain more later, though. Hansen left the shelter after that, afraid staying there any longer would damage his body. Back in the underground shelter, he returned to his normal size. He focused on absorbing and refining his life geno essences, and he was delighted to find that he now made progress much faster. Life geno essence absorbed, super geno points, plus one. A little while later, Hansen was able to gain a super geno point. It made him very pleased. My ability to refine life geno essences has greatly improved. Following the unlock of the Dongxian Sutra's sixth gene lock, Han San thought to himself as he continued his practice. Life Geno Essence Absorbed, Super Geno Points, Plus One. A little while later again, the familiar voice sounded. Han San stayed in his room most of the day, focused on the refinement and absorption of the Life Geno Essences he had accumulated thus far. He was able to fully refine each Life Geno Essence he had collected, aside from the invisible King Scorpions. After opening his sixth gene lock, his absorption powers were much stronger. Awesome! He exclaimed, realizing how many life geno essences he had been able to absorb. In total, Han Sen's super geno point tally had reached 24. Now that he was able to quickly absorb the life geno essences of super creatures, he could focus on hunting them down to max his stats out in the near future. Han Sen, Super Body Super King Spirit. Level, Surpasser. Lifespan, 400. Evolution Requirement, 100 Geno Points. Own Geno Points, 100 Ordinary Geno Points, 100 Primitive Geno Points, 100 Mutant Geno Points, 100 Sacred Blood Geno Points, 24 Super Geno Points. Hansen guessed his fitness level must have been around the 2500 mark. He wasn't far off possessing the strength of a super creature himself. Hansen gobbled up some more walnuts and returned to a mortal shelter. There, he took the time to speak with Zhang Yuqin. After that, Han Sun returned to the fifth floor. He summoned Dragon King and asked him, I'm on the highest floor. How are you going to find the tree for me? Dragon King sniffed around his new environment and said, I don't smell the sky tree. You're going to have to take me for a walk. I don't have time for that right now. I need to go pick up sky fruit with Dry Bone King later. Han Sen then proceeded to tell Dragon King what Dry Bone King had told him. Dragon King said, That's good. The tree might be dead, but at least the fruit can mature. With the competition, getting it will be difficult, though. The nuts you mill were most likely from the sky fruit. Only Sky King is privy to whatever the powder does, it would appear. Dragon King then went on to say, Sky King is very generous, allowing you to have as much as you want, leaving him only the nuts. Is there anything else I should know about the fruit? Hansen asked. Hansen had eaten many of the other walnuts, and save for the shell and nut inside, there didn't appear to be anything special about them. I'm not sure, but it has to be some good stuff. Drybone King wouldn't be working for Sky King, otherwise. Dragon King then pointed at Hansen and resumed his dialogue. Each fruit is bound to contain a Geno treasure of sorts, an item that is super class for sure. Wouldn't it be great if you could procure some? Han San started to say something but frowned before he could. He noticed a note had been left on his table, one that had been written in the human language. If you wish to stay alive, follow Ching Jun. Han San read the words and continued to stare at the paper. He was the only human capable of reaching the fifth floor. So, he wondered, how had someone left that note for him? Did Dry Bone King leave this for me? Hansen froze ned. Dry Bone King was the only one he had met since arriving on the fifth floor. But Dry Bone King wasn't a fan of Ching Jun and her wicked ways either. Why would he tell Hansen to follow her? Hansen turned the paper over and was given a shock. On the back of the paper was a symbol drawn in red. It was a large picture of the Nine Life Cat. Someone from Blood Legion is on the fifth floor? That can't be right. There aren't any other humans strong enough to get here. Hansen was truly taken aback, not having a clue how this had come about. Was it Dry Bone King? Hansen didn't think it was possible, or at the very least extremely unlikely. Blood Legion was a human organization with a murky, sordid past. 
Still, it was human, through and through, and neither spirits nor super creatures would be members of it. Dry Bone King arrived shortly after, looking for Han Senator he was accompanied by another king spirit. His name was Baby Ghost, and his appearance amused Han Senator the spirit had a head that was enlarged like a baby's, but the body was skinny, frail, and extremely small. Han San didn't notice a change in Dry Bone King's behavior, which suggested it was unlikely he was the one who left the note. Han Sen then wondered if it was Ching Jun herself who had left it. Perhaps it was some sort of weird trick of hers, as she wasn't exactly the most sound-minded individual. But if that was true, how could she have known about Blood Legion and Han Sen's connection to it? As Han Sen mulled this over, Dry Bone King led Han San to the plaza. When they arrived, a female king spirit was there waiting for them. She was accompanied by seven super creatures. Ching Jun King did not even look at Han Sen and simply approached the sky fruit. The path ahead had been built by the spirits and creatures of the fourth floor, but they weren't allowed to accept the fruit. If they even so much as stumbled across one during their time of building, they'd have been outright killed. Han Sen thought super creatures and king spirits were awesome beings of an unbridled power, coupled with near-prophetic intelligence and behavior that presented them as deity-like figures. This image he had of them became extremely distorted when he witnessed them enter the sky fruit. Their grace was discarded in favor of being simple, hard-working miners. The sky fruit nuts were not too tough, but the shells around them were like spherical bulwarks. To retrieve the nuts, the shells had to be broken. But there were also barriers to break. The barriers were a little harder than the physical shells of the nuts. He had tried to break a shell with his phoenix sword previously, but he had been unable to. Without such weaponry, and with the barrier being stronger, he was in for a trying time. Han San accepted a shovel, given to him by Dry Bone King. Upon striking the barrier before him, he was only able to peel away a thin section. Digging through it all was sure to take a long time. There wasn't just one barrier there, either. The entire fruit was composed of various nut rooms, with entries separated by additional barriers of their own. Han Sen's job was to break through the barriers to obtain the Geno treasure that was said to reside inside. The lower tier creatures would then come and take the nuts. Seeing them all working hard, Han Sen's mind drifted back to wonder who might have placed the slip of paper in his room, and why the note said what it did, telling him to follow Ching Jun King. Weird. Han Sen suddenly heard Dragon King's voice, as if he had spoken directly into his ears. Han Sen looked around seeing if anyone else might have heard him. It didn't seem that way, so he peeked at his ring. Don't worry, this is a secret method of communication. They won't hear me, Dragon King said. Hansen wanted to talk, but he didn't know how to do so without alerting the others. He'd look like a madman, babbling to himself. This sky fruit is weird. Dragon King paused, and then went on to say, I can't feel the presence of Geno treasure. Hansen thought, the tree is dead. Isn't the lack of a Geno treasure normal? It looked as if Dragon King could read Han Sen's mind, as he then said, I can sense the presence of Geno treasures, even if they haven't been created yet. I know where they would be. Here, there is absolutely nothing. Forget about the treasure. Just find out where the tree we're looking for might be. Han Sen used Dongxian Aura to hide himself and his speech. I don't sense that either, Dragon King said. Han Sen wanted him to find out where the sky tree was. Now, unable to find a trace of it, Han Sen was starting to suspect Dragon King was seeking to double-cross him. Han Sen and Dry Bone King's people continued digging for another hour, and that was when they uncovered a path that led to the nut. This place serves as a junction that leads to four nut rooms. We should split into four teams to cover each path. Whoever finds the Geno treasure first can claim it. If you can't claim it, Others can try, Ching Jun King said. Dry Bone, Baby Ghost, group up with Earth Beast, Ching Jun King said. Eleven people split into four teams. Ching Jun King did not put Han San in a team. One other super creature was left out, too, and so she said, You're new, so who would you like to team up with? Me or the creature? I'll go with you, Han San said. This choice surprised Dry Bone King and Baby Ghost King. Ching Jun King was shocked, too. Ching Jun King's face went cold again, and she walked towards the barrier. Dry Bone King wished to say something, 
but everyone would have heard him speak. Regretfully, he had to hold his tongue. Han San saw that he wished to say something, and guessed his words would have been something like, you're committing suicide. But Han Sin did not choose Ching Jun King because of the paper. He wasn't afraid of her, and he could use this opportunity to find out why she so desperately wanted Xiu Ping to kill Zhang Yuqin. She could have killed them both with the greatest of ease, so her need for drama seemed unnecessary and uncharacteristic of a king's spirit. They broke the nut and then started to work on another barrier. Han Sin was only able to dig up a thin slice each time, but Ching Jun King was able to dig up a whole lot more. It took them two hours to dig a path that was big enough. After going through, they arrived in another nut room. They had to dig a path that was big enough for the creatures to come through and carry the fruit out. For now, though, they were alone together. Hansen knew he had to be careful, but Ching Jun King seemed focused on the task at hand. She got to work on yet another barrier. Hansen followed, but kept his wits about him. This is strange. Real strange. Dragon King's voice started to sound in Han Sin's ear again. Ching Jun King was standing one meter away from Han Sin, so no matter how quietly he sought to speak, she'd hear any response he made to Dragon King. I can feel the presence of Gino Treasure ahead. It is behind this wall, but it's strange, Dragon King said. Han Sin was happy, hearing he was about to stumble across the treasure. But with Ching Jun King there, they'd probably fight over its ownership. Dragon King said, there is something very wrong with this Gino treasure. Hansen wanted to ask him for more details, but couldn't on account of Ching Jun King being right next to him. Furthermore, I know where the sky tree is. Dragon King suddenly screamed. Where is the sky tree? Hansen almost blurted out. Dragon King continued talking, saying, I cannot believe Sky King is doing this. He wishes to sacrifice everyone here. He wants you all to become fertilizer. Han San wanted to ask Dragon King to elaborate, but seeing Ching Jun King right next to him, simply decided to continue digging and listen. Dragon King sighed and said, When you break the barrier, you have to get the Gino treasure. If you don't, we will all die here. Han San frowned, thinking he might be exaggerating. If Sky King had been scheming, he couldn't enact a plan to wipe them all out in an instant. It wasn't as if Dragon King was the nicest person, either. He sacrificed a multitude of super creatures to revive himself. Dragon King quickly said, Even if you leave the tree, you'll be killed. Everyone who has eaten the walnuts will die, and that includes you. What? Do you think this entire forest isn't associated with the sky tree? Han Sen's heart jumped, but Dragon King did not stop explaining. He said, You have to grab that Geno treasure. Trust me on this. I will explain everything once this is over. Han Sen could not reply to him right now, but he decided to follow his wishes. He was determined to take the Geno treasure now. Even if Dragon King was lying and this was all just a scheme, there was no harm in obtaining Geno treasure, after all. Ching Jun King was right there, though. He wondered how he might grab it before she did. The rule was, whoever found the Geno treasure could keep it. If two people discovered it, the person who was stronger could keep it. Han Sen was not weak. But if he wanted to beat Ching Jun King, he might have to activate Super King's spirit mode. A small portion of the barrier had been dug all the way through now, revealing a glimpse of the nut room on the other side. The nut room was strangely empty. Han Sen leaned in to take a closer look, and that was when he saw a pair of red eyes peering at him from the other side of the hole. Han Sen jumped back as the red thing started to emerge from the hole he had created for it. As it started to come out, Han Sen quickly activated his gene locks to scan and get an idea of what he was faced with. The results surprised him. It was a bronze mirror. Its surface was red, and the frame was adorned with a number of strange glyphs and symbols. The reflection, Han Sen had seen, depicted him as an enigmatic red being. Those red eyes, were they mine? Han Sen wondered to himself. Ching Jun King lashed the mirror with her whip. Arg! Han Sen med. Ching Jun King lashed the mirror, but Hansen felt the pain of that attack strike him. Looking at his clothes, he noticed they had been torn. Hansen looked back at the mirror and saw himself inside it. His body in the mirror was a reflection of himself, wound and all, but then he started to smile. Outside of the mirror, a smile was the last thing he could raise. Oh, snap! 
Han Xiao knew the moment he looked at that mirror. He had been tricked. Arg. Ching Jun King lashed the mirror again. The mirror was fine, but the doppelganger inside the mirror was damaged. That same amount of damage was delivered to the real Han Xian, standing outside, hopeless and unsure of what to do. Stop. You are going to kill me. Han Xian gathered up his power, preparing to stop her. She wanted him dead, anyway. So now she had a perfectly valid chance to do what she had hoped. The message on that paper led me here. It wanted me to follow her and die. Han Sen's mind raced for a solution to the current predicament. Even if Han Sen stopped Ching Jun King, the mirror had already copied Han Sen's image. Just as Han Sen moved to stop her, though, she listened. She stopped attacking due to his plight. Han Sen did not have the time to mull the exact reason why. So he just turned his attention back to the mirror and thought of a way he could kill it without bringing harm upon himself. Han Sen's mirror-residing doppelganger gave another crooked smile. Then, he raised his fist and hit himself. Han Sen's real face then started to bleed in response. Han Sen's nose was pummeled repeatedly, and blood oozed from it. In a few more hits, Han Sen believed it'd be flattened like roadkill. It looked like fitness level did not matter in this situation. If the shadow self was damaged, then true person himself would be damaged. There didn't seem to be a way to avoid it. Han Sen didn't think he could break the mirror, as that would be the same as dealing a copious amount of damage to himself. But the person in the mirror seemed happy to hit himself and ensure Han Sen was dealt damage. Anyway, all of a sudden, in a matter of moments, Han Sen felt all of his powers were useless. Dumb asteriskus, go break it, Ching Jun King commanded. How? Han Sen asked. Just break it. He is you, so only you can break it, Ching Jun King explained. Han Sen did not believe her words to be true and didn't think she'd be so kind as to offer a solution to his current sorrow and pain. This was her best opportunity to kill him, so it wasn't likely she'd squander it. Arg. The shadow inside the mirror continued to punch itself, causing Han Sen constant pain. They both looked identical, but fortunately, it couldn't, or at least wasn't making use of Han Sen's full, insane powers. He'd have been killed fairly quickly if it had. Han Sen withstood the pain and threw a punch at the mirror. The mirror did not avoid Ching Jun King's attacks, but it made sure to dodge Han Sen's. This lent credence to what Ching Jun King had told him, and he was relieved to hear she was telling him the truth. Only the person who the mirror mimicked could deal damage to it. When the mirror dodged, Han Sen decided not to waste any more time. He threw another punch at the mirror, but this time, it was with all nine gene locks of the Blood Pulse Sutra that, combined with Curse of Immortality, Jade Sun Force, and his Phoenix techniques firing on all cylinders, he was aiming to devastate the reflective fiend. Pang! The bronze mirror was sent flying backwards, directly into the barrier. Aside from the shadow in the mirror, it did not look like the mirror could attack in any other way. But the mirror was tough that much was certain. Despite sending the mirror flying, Han Sen was unable to actually deal it damage. Not a single scratch blemished the glassy surface of the mirror, and much to Han Sen's discomfort and pain, the shadow self continued to self-harm. Han Sen gritted his teeth to withstand the constant pummeling and punched the mirror again. The mirror was against the barrier, so it was a clear shot. Like a hurricane, Han Sen unleashed a flurry of attacks against the mirror's surface. Han Sen punched it countless times, but despite his best attempts, he could not shatter the mirror. And all the while, the doppelganger continued to hurt himself. The shadow smiled, as if laughing and mocking Han Senator he was spiting Han Sen, as if to say he was useless and there was nothing he could do to rectify the situation. You think I'm a coward? Han Sen tweaked. Han Sen and Ching Jun King had seen the mirror together, but the mirror had chosen Han Sen for some inexplicable reason. Han Sen thought it must have meant the mirror believed he was the weaker of the two. Han Sen did not have any of his weapons on him, and the Blood Pulse Sutra only bettered the body. It wasn't really a skill that lent itself to dealing massive amounts of extra damage. It wasn't a proper combat ability. Han Sen was unable to break the mirror, and he felt as if he had exhausted all options. He couldn't think of anything else to do. Han Sen could have used Super King Spirit Mode, but he didn't want to expose himself as the king to Ching Jun King. 
Han Sin looked into his sea of soul. Little Angel and the Gold Raven were still in the process of evolving. And them aside, he had no super weapons to call upon. Han Sin might have been able to use saving money to break the mirror. But the shadow would hit Han Sin while he was performing it, which would render it ineffective. Han Sen could have summoned Disloyal Knight, but his attack power wasn't very high. And if a pet beast soul could deal damage to Han Sen by striking the mirror, that would be very bad news for him. Han Sen could not think of a way out of this situation. Next time I return to the Alliance, I need to get myself a strong attack skill, Han Sen thought to himself. Just as Han Sen decided to activate Super King Spirit Mode, he heard a movement stem from the Sea of Soul. Han Sen looked inside there and he noticed a strange energy permeating it. The sky fruit wasn't very big, so the fight against the mirror was easily noticed by the other king spirits and super creatures. Baby Ghost and Dry Bone ran over, in shock at what was going on. When they looked into the mirror, though, they quickly understood what was happening. This is bad. If Han Sun can't break the mirror, this will most certainly be the end of him, Baby Ghost said. The bronze mirror has a reflective power. If someone else hits it, it means hitting Han Senator we can't help him. He has to help himself, Dry Bone King said. It was difficult to find someone else to go up against Ching Jun King. So if Han San was to die there, it'd be a grand shame. But they couldn't help. And if they tried, Han Sen would be beaten to death. All the super creatures came over to watch the events unfolding around the mirror. They were waiting for Han San to fail, so they could take the Geno treasure. Ching Jun King looked at Han San, and she seemed to be deep in thought over something. As Han San continued to beat the mirror, he was actually more invested in investigating what was transpiring in the Sea of Soul. The light around Little Angel was now very holy. She was like a flower in the midst of blooming, with petals opening to reveal what was inside. A powerful light was being unleashed, and it even frightened Disloyal Knight. Has Little Angel finished evolving? Han San was delighted, feeling the warmth and abundant power that was slowly swelling within the Sea of Soul. Han San thought a pet beast soul from another sanctuary needed to open Jean locks for themselves, and he thought it'd take another long while for her to become effective enough to fight. But seeing all that power now, Han San understood there was more to Little Angel than he had first thought. She was a lot more than simple eye candy. She was in battle mode already, and many of her Jean locks had already been opened. The petals had all peeled away now, revealing a package of bright golden light. The light sent ripples through the entirety of the Sea of Soul. When it was fully exposed, Little Angel's form came to be. She was divine, clad in a beautiful white robe. She had angelic wings, and in her hands, she clutched a transparent greatsword. Her curly blonde hair waved, painting her like a goddess. Angel of Principality, Pet Type Evolution Hansen looked at her stats. From what he could tell, it was only the name that had changed. The rest was the same. But the energy emanating from Little Angel told Han San there was more to her evolution than he could initially ascertain. Below the surface, this was more than just a name change. Han San now wondered whether or not he should summon her. The halo on her head always imbued Han San with a greater power. After all, Han San noticed his head now had a halo the same as Little Angel. He felt as if it was an inexhaustible vat of power, one that could cascade into his body and fill him with unrivaled strength. It was strong like holy water, cleansing his body and purifying his power. Han San did not stop attacking the mirror. The moment the halo ring gleamed above his head, the slight sounds of glass cracking could be heard. A ribbon of strain began to form on the surface of the glass, and then... The crack popped into a web of fissures that coursed its way across the entirety of the mirror. The doppelganger lost its smug smile and was given a shock. It began to run around in fright, making a freakish wailing sound. Boom! The glass of the bronze mirror shattered into a thousand pieces. A red light manifested itself in the physical world following the destruction, and Han San was quick to grab it. It was the core of the mirror. It was bronze and small like a bean. It was quite similar to a walnut. Dry Bone, Baby Ghost, and Ching Jun looked at Han San in disbelief. They were more than surprised to see him manage to pull through that horrifying ordeal. The super creatures did not know why or how Han San had achieved such power, or where the additional power had come from. 
You have been hiding your power, it would seem. I was starting to worry, Drybone King said. I was merely fighting for my life, Hansen said. Your luck and power are things to be admired. You obtained the Geno treasure your first time here, Baby Ghost stated. Drybone and Baby Ghost were nice to Han Senator they had initially believed him to be weak, but after this ordeal, they well and truly believed him to be an equal. Go back to work, Ching Jun snapped. And then, everyone did. But due to Han Sen having already obtained the treasure, the effort they put into their work had obviously laxed. Their haste to get the job done had evaporated. Thanks for the help, Hansen said. Ching Jun ignored him and continued digging. Hansen wanted to strike up a conversation, though. So, he asked, Hey, can I ask you a question? Because you should know why I'm here. I should be your enemy, after all. Ching Jun just told him, You aren't good enough to be my enemy. Hansen was not sure what to respond, as he just thought she was a strange character. He didn't quite know what to make of her on the whole. After another half day of work, all the barriers had been removed. When the rest of the creatures moved in to secure the walnuts, the rest went back to the fifth floor. Han Sen returned to his house. He masked his presence there and summoned Dragon King. What was that? Han Sen finally had the chance to ask him the questions he had so much wanted to earlier. Dragon King said, that asterisk shoal didn't grow a new tree. He wants to sacrifice everyone in the hopes of reviving this current one. I thought you told me he had grown a new one, due to this one being irreparable. Hansen now wore a scowl, learning of Dragon King's blunder. Dragon King felt awkward, so he explained, That was me, jumping to conclusions. But when I saw the Geno treasure, I finally realized this tree isn't totally dead. It was only then that I realized I had been wrong. Then what is it? Han Sen knew there'd be no point in getting mad at the spirit. Dragon King said, Let's say every fruit is individual. The energy of each Geno item should be individual too. When I scan the fruit, though, this wasn't so. This means the fruit still exists as a part of the tree. That means the tree is not dead. You see? I'm not sure how this was achieved, but it is what it is. Dragon King then went on to say, If the tree is not dead, Sky King will stop at nothing to fully revive it. And doing that requires a lot of nutrition. He has many spirits and creatures in there, all of which can provide the nutrition he seeks. And how exactly would he sacrifice everyone here? While some may spawn, many come here by eating the walnuts, Hansen said. The walnuts are only one small part of this. Haven't you noticed the life water everyone drinks here? Dragon King said. You said it was a sky drop. Actually, and you said it was good. Hansen throve ned. Dragon King nodded, saying, It is, but only when the tree is dead. Sky drops are the essence of the sky fruit. If the tree is alive, they can be controlled by the tree. While they may be a benefit right now, the tree could kill you once it has fully revived. Dragon King smiled and said, But don't worry, you obtained the Geno treasure. You can make good use of that. How? Hansen asked, bringing it out. This is a seed of the sky tree. It's like a small, sister tree. But the seed is individual, so you'll have to use it to absorb the stuff inside you. Do that, and you've got nothing to worry about, Dragon King explained. Hansen took Dragon King's advice and followed his instructions. He tried to extract the thing from his body, but it turned out Hansen didn't have the thing inside him. He initially thought Dragon King must have gotten something wrong or had taught him incorrectly. But when Hansen tried it on Zhang Yuqin and the others, the method worked. For some reason, the thing just couldn't exist inside Hansen's body. Dragon King was shocked by the discovery, too. He expected Hansen to show much appreciation and reward him. Little did he expect that Hansen wouldn't even need such knowledge. Not bad. Hansen still gave him a small compliment for the tip. While Hansen might have been okay, there were still many humans inside a mortal shelter. He wanted to save as many of them as he could. Han San went out to find Zhang Yuqin and many of the others, and he helped them break the contract with their spirits. With Han San's reputation and status, and the backing of Dry Bone King and Baby Ghost, everyone was freed except for Chiu Ping. Everyone else had signed a contract with a royal spirit, but Chiu Ping had signed a contract with Qing Jun King directly. Han San sent them all to his underground shelter while he remained inside the sky tree. 
This was because Chiu Ping was still under contract, and Han San wanted a few more goodies before leaving. If the tree grew, everyone there would be food, super creatures included. And with seven mighty super creatures there, Han Sen thought it'd be a waste. One more question lingered on Han Sen's mind, as well. Who left him the slip of paper? He asked all the humans he had rescued, but none were likely candidates. Did a king's spirit or super creature write it, maybe? Han Sen didn't have a clue, much to his annoyance. But Han Sen was also willing to stay due to Little Angel's finished evolution. Seeing the Halo Rings buff, Han Sen knew she had to be incredibly powerful. And with Disloyal Knight also there for backup, it gave Han Sen the courage to hang around. In his private room there, Han Sen was practicing when all of a sudden, someone barged through his door. It was Ching Jun King, and she approached with great anger. She immediately shouted, Where did you hide Zhang Yu Chen? You are a king's spirit, aren't you? Why do you care so much about a human? Han Sen responded, That is none of your business. Give him to me. Ching Jun King said, I don't have him, Han Sen said. Do you really want me to become your enemy? Ching Jun King asked, I'm not your enemy, but it's true. I really don't have him, Han Sen said. Fine. Ching Jun gave Han Sen one last cold stare, then marched out. Drybone and Baby Ghost had arrived just in time to see the commotion. Drybone looked at Han Sen and said, You really made her mad this time. Han Sen asked, Why does she care about him, a human? So much? Drybone answered, You may not understand. It has to do with her practice of a skill. It is called love. Humans can become far more emotional than spirits. So Ching Jun selected Chiu Ping and Zhang Yuchen as her target for this. If Chiu Ping kills Zhang Yuchen on her behalf, and she then kills Chiu Ping, her practice with the skill will be complete. But Dry Bone King broke out in laughter. But what? Han Sin asked. Baby Ghost continued the speech, saying, But Chiu Ping is smart. He genuinely liked her, but he wasn't willing to kill Zhang Yuchen for her. He knows about her plan, and he has known for a very long time. He just pretends he doesn't know anything. This entire thing has been going on for 20 years. She has grown impatient over the course of that time, due to her being unable to finish the skill herself. Drybone then said, She knows she has failed, but she is a spirit. Pride is as important for her as it is for us. She will never admit it. Now that you have sent him away, though, the slim chance for a future success may have well and truly disappeared. It angers her, and she won't let you slip away so easily. Han Sen now fully understood why she cared about the humans so much. What do you think she'll do? What can she do? Is she going to try to kill me with her seven super creatures? Han Sen von Dreda Lud. Ching Jun King was only a spirit with nine of her gene locks open. With Little Angel ready to be unleashed, Han Sun wasn't afraid at all. She can't do that. Mr. Immortal won't allow her to hurt anyone. The extent of her command starts and ends with manual labor. They aren't her pets or anything, Drybone reassured Han Sen. Han Sen knew Sky King needed them as food, so it was likely true. He wouldn't allow them to kill each other over squabbles of their own. Then what is there to worry about? Han Sen sighed. Drybone King answered, To be honest, me and Baby Ghost don't have what it takes to fight her together. She is that good? Han San was surprised upon hearing this. Yes. Why else would she be the one in charge? It's why you need to exercise some caution and be careful, Baby Ghost replied. Thanks for the information, you two. I'll definitely try to be more careful, Han San said. After sending Drybone and Baby Ghost away, Han San noticed another slip of paper on his table. Did one of them just leave this without me realizing it? Hansen looked on the back of the paper first and saw another Nine Life Cat symbol. Didn't I tell you to follow Ching Jun? Give Zhang Yuchen back to her or die. The handwriting looked as if it had been hastily scribbled. With no concern for what had been written, Han San threw it away. He didn't care for the content of the paper, only who wrote it. It didn't seem as if Dry Bone or Baby Ghost were responsible. They had made it clear they weren't fond of Ching Jun and wanted to overthrow her, but even if it was them, how could they be associated with Blood Legion? For now, Han Sen could only wait for the person behind the curtains to reveal themselves. Han Sen thought Ching Jun would come after him, but after waiting a few days, nothing happened. 
After a few more days passed, Han Sen noticed the presence of another slip of paper. Leave this shelter. You are in danger. Han Sen crumpled it up and threw the paper away once again. He had worked hard to get where he was, so he wasn't quite willing to leave just yet. And still, he was extremely curious about who was leaving these messages for him. After all, who could have secretly delivered the slips of paper, time and time again, without him noticing? Perhaps it was a king spirit or super creature. It couldn't have been dry bone and baby ghost, as their behavior did not appear remotely concerning. They were the same as ever. And aside from those two, there were only seven other super creatures. Hansen went to investigate them. There was a nine-headed dragon, an armored beast, a hellbird, a rock king, a ghost eye, a water fairy, and a demon flower amongst them. The nine-headed dragon was a cruel and ruthless fiend. The armored beast kept to itself and was a private thing. The hellbird did not stay in the shelter often and spent most of its time away. The rock king worked hard, and when it was done, it went home to relax. If it was a super creature behind the letters, it had to be the ghost eye, water fairy, or demon flower. The ghost eye was restless and never stayed put. It frequently traveled around, sticking its nose in other people's business. It had even come over to see Hansen once, but due to Hansen not speaking its language, it didn't stay for long. The water fairy was a humanoid creature. It was in the shape of a voluptuous-looking woman, but one that was composed by running water. The water fairy was able to speak with Han Sen, but she had never visited him at his home before. The demon flower was a walking plant that could speak in every language. Those three were the most suspicious of the super creature lot, but Han Sen couldn't tell if they were acting odd or that was just how they were. Han Sen had dug through three sky fruit in his time there, but was unable to receive any more Geno treasures. He was, however, given more life water. The life water he received now was of a much higher quality, suited for beings of that rank. He had four drops, but he opted not to consume them. Han Sen's Geno treasure was tiny. If Han Sen used the life water he was now given, he wagered it wouldn't be able to save him. Han Sen spent another three days in the tree hole and eventually decided to leave the place. Before he went, though, the water fairy stopped him. The water fairy's liquid composed but wobbled as she walked. Her body was an attractive sight that aroused Han Sen. She approached Han Sen, smiled, and said, Han Sen, would you like to make a deal? What kind of deal would that be? Han Sen was confused by the sudden proposition. If you give me a drop of that life water, I'll have sex with you. A drop for a drip? Before Han Sen could say anything, she swiftly stepped up to Han Sen, grabbed his hands, and placed them on her gelatinous boobies. Han Sen felt as if he was clutching jelly, and her boobs felt amazing to hold and squeeze. Feeling awkward about it, though, Han Sen had to pull his hands back and say, But we aren't the same species. That's fine. I can be anything you want me to be. The water fairy's boobs and buttocks grew to an even bigger and more salacious size. Due to her being half transparent, she looked extremely attractive. Cough. Cough. Hansen Korg head. You don't like this? The water fairy's body changed again, becoming the shape of a little girl in a swimsuit. She then squeezed and hugged Hansen's arm. Hansen, however, just stood there. So, she tried a number of different appearances to prompt a response. She became an aloof lady, a moody lady, and a sunny lady. Unsure of what would get Han San to leap upon her with lecherous hands, she even gave herself bunny ears and the tail of a fox. Han San was in disbelief the entire time. She was like an erotic shapeshifter. But no matter how attractive she tried to be, she was just a naked, half-transparent lady. Clearly, she and other non-humans of the sanctuary did not understand what truly attracted one human to another. If you want life water... How about you trade me a Geno treasure for it? Hansen offered, instead. The fairy was clearly disappointed, but she smiled and just said, I don't have Geno treasure, but I might have something you could be interested in. The water fairy brought something out. Hansen examined it. It was a small orb, not much bigger than a ping pong ball. It seemed to have been made from polished crystal. What is this? Did you create this? Han San could sense her energy stemming from the water drop orb. Water Fairy smiled and said, This is my gear. 
and it is called a water drop orb. With this orb, you can prevent watery chaos. Can I swap this for all four of your life water drops? Define what watery chaos means first, Hansen said, not quite catching her drift. Water Fairy gave the orb to Han San and then fired a water arrow at him. Pang! The water arrow broke into a liquidy splash, despite only being one foot away from Han San. Water Fairy smiled and said, The orb can block my attacks. It can only block water damage, mind you. And after some use, it'll take a while before it can be used again. But I used up one of my life water vials. Han San wanted others to believe this. Deal. Water Fairy was happy to swap the water drop orb for Han Sen's remaining vials of life water. Han Sen played with the water drop orb, although it only blocked water damage, and it wasn't the most useful item in the sanctuary, it was better than nothing. The life water was outright harmful, after all, so it was little more than a waste of space. The other super creatures soon learned about their trade, too, and they all wanted to do the same. Unfortunately, Han Sen had no more life water left. After a while, Han Sen was able to obtain another two. Ghost I came to him shortly after, wanting to make an exchange. Ghost I threw him an eyeball that was black and white. It was reminiscent of Tai Chi in some ways. Han Sen was not sure what it could do, but the eyeball was obviously gear that the creature had created. Much like the fairy, it wanted to swap the gear for Han Sen's life water. I only have two life water drops. Do you still want to make the trade? Han Sen asked while pulling his two vials out. Ghost I was actually an ape. One of its eyes was a murky shade of white, and it was an unsettling creature to look upon. But it was also the most active super creature amongst them. It swallowed the life water and left immediately. Hansen looked at the eyeball-like item he had been given. He noticed it was able to do something with Ian and Yang. If Hansen practiced Yang, he could use the item to make it Ian. If he practiced Ian, then he could make it Yang. Hansen had in Yang Blast, which meant the item wasn't very useful for him. For people who only practiced one, it would be a precious item to have, though. If I work here for a long time, I should be able to amass quite the array of gear. Hansen thought the terms of these exchanges were more than fair, considering he had no need for the life water he'd be giving up. As a result, Hansen made plans to collect more life water for gear. But, a few days later, he stumbled across another message. It seemed as if the person who had been leaving the messages wanted to meet Han San, at last. On the paper was an address and a time. Han San made a mental note of it, and then incinerated the parchment. The next day, Han San left the tree. They were going to meet in a certain grove inside the walnut forest. Han San arrived early, curious to meet the message-leaving enigma. After a while of waiting, Han San heard someone approach. The person wasn't quite there yet and the forest was wreathed with vines that obscured the view quite a bit. Hansen would be unable to see who it was until they came closer. When the person's identity was finally revealed, Hansen was shocked. Despite all the possibilities he had mulled over in his mind, Hansen was utterly flabbergasted it was that person who had been leaving him the slips of paper. Didn't I tell you to leave? What are you still doing here? The man said coldly. You're the one leaving me slips of paper then. I assume. Hansen looked at the man with a strange expression. He had a big head and the body of a frail baby. It was Baby Ghost. Who else? Baby Ghost said. Then you know what this is? Hansen brought out a paper with the Nine Life Cat symbol on it. Hansen believed he had been the one leaving the messages, but he did not believe Baby Ghost knew anything about the Nine Life Cat or Blood Legion. I am a member of Blood Legion. You think I don't know what that is? Baby Ghost looked at Han San with disdain. Han San was shocked. Baby Ghost was a king's spirit. How could he be a member of a human organization? Although Han San had readied himself for this possibility, he was still taken aback to hear it out loud. You are a member? Han San was almost unable to believe it. For a king's spirit of the third god's sanctuary to be a member of Blood Legion was a nigh insane thing to comprehend. Han San knew Blood Legion was strong but he did not expect the organization would be strong enough to employ king spirits of the third god's sanctuary. Hansen felt as if his world had been turned upside down, and all he knew about Blood Legion had been incorrect. What exactly was Blood Legion? Baby Ghost pulled out something and tossed it over to Hansen. 
It was a card of the Alliance. Hansen had seen such things many times, as it was a card that usually had the Nine Life Cat symbol on its underside. Hansen flipped it over, and as expected, there it was. It was a Nine Life Cat card. I am the Vice Leader of Blood Legion. My title is Ghost Baby, Baby Ghost King said. When Hansen heard what he was told, his immediate reaction was to frown. Surprises were nothing new to him at this point, but this one hit a little harder than most. You are the vice leader of Blood Legion? In that case, you know who the leader is? Hansen asked. You aren't a member, so I'm not obliged to tell you anything. But now that you're out of that shelter, I heartily recommend you don't return, Baby Ghost said. Han San thought the person who gave him the paper must have noticed or sensed he was wearing the Nine Life Cat pendant, and that the parchment used was in reference to it. That didn't seem to be the case, though. Baby Ghost did not seem to know about Han Sen's connection with Blood Legion, and the paper Baby Ghost had been using to warn Han Sen had only been intended to flaunt the organization he was a member of. If you don't think I'm a member, why would you help me? Han Sen asked. Hansen had just met one of the most important figures of the enigmatic Blood Legion organization. Although he could not be 100% certain he was not being told a falsehood, he wanted to ask as many questions as he could and learn more. This was a wildly rare opportunity. Baby Ghost merely stared at Hansen, saying, Your image. You remind me of someone. Who? Hansen was not expecting this response. Han Yingsi, Baby Ghost answered. The composure of Han Sen's mind was given a shake, but he still managed to calmly ask, How do you know him? Baby Ghost's face suggested he had just taken a brief trip down memory lane. When he returned to the situation at hand, he just told Han Sen, You don't need to know anything about all this. Just don't go back to a mortal shelter. At least tell me why. Give me one good reason why I should leave. I can't just walk away after everything. All because of your few measly words. Han Sen proclaimed. Baby Ghost turned around and said, If you want to go back, go back. I won't stop you. But on your head be it, should things run afoul for you. Wait. Han Sen brought out the Nine Life Cat pendant that was tucked beneath his shirt and said, If you are the Vice Leader of Blood Legion, surely you know what this is, don't you? Baby Ghost turned back around, and the stiffness of his face dropped in shock. His eyes widened as they peered at the pendant. Baby Ghost suddenly moved. Han Sen opened his gene locks, ready to fight. But what happened in the next second surprised even him. Baby Ghost had dropped onto the ground so quickly that a crater was formed. In that shallow pit, he bowed before Han Sen. Pang, pang, pang. Baby Ghost bowed repeatedly, with alarming speed and sincerity. All the while, his lips murmured and mumbled incoherent speech. Hansen froze in his place, having not expected a reaction such as this. This was a king spirit of the third god sanctuary. It had the potential to beat any human. But there it was, down on its hands and knees in respect to a small item belonging to a human organization. Is Blood Legion that big of a deal? The pendant he always carried with him suddenly felt much heavier. Baby Ghost then stood up. In a state of shock, he asked, Who are you? Why would you possess that relic? Seeing Baby Ghost's face, Hansen felt giving him the wrong answer now would swiftly lead to his death. Han Jingji gave it to me, Hansen answered. Baby Ghost's face changed to one that was resolute. He barked, That's impossible. Han Jingji could not have possessed such a relic. But this did belong to him, Hansen reconfirmed. Baby Ghost then said, It belongs to Blood Legion. What are you suggesting? Hansen always thought Han Jingji might have been the leader of Blood Legion. There was definitely a strong association between the two, after all. But now, hearing Baby Ghost's reaction, that didn't seem likely. The fact that Baby Ghost was willing to state Han Jingji's name so freely also suggested he wasn't the leader or anyone of renown and importance within the ranks of Blood Legion. Han Jingji is a part of Blood Legion, isn't he? Why would it be impossible for him to have it? Hansen asked. Baby Ghost's expression had turned dark, as if the fancy for murder had taken over his mind. Angrily, he spat out his words, saying, You really are talking, asterisk T. Han Jingji is not a member of Blood Legion, and there is no possible way for him to possess that relic. Be honest with me, boy. 
lest I pry the answers out of you with profound agony and suffering. Han San was shocked. Hearing Han Jingji was not even a lowly member of the organization. If Baby Ghost really was the vice leader, then it clearly meant he knew more about Blood Legion than Hansen did. And that flipped all of Han Sen's theories thus far on their head. But why would Han Jingji ask Uncle Bug to join him in a search for the relic? Why would he know about its existence, given where it was found? Believe it or not, this was originally Han Jingji's. A lot of people can verify this claim, Han Sen said, standing his ground. Baby Ghost looked at Han Sen as if he was trying to scan his mind and discover the truth behind some lie he was being told. Hansen then said, So tell me, how do you know about Han Jingji? Baby Ghost wished to say something more, but his face changed. Then, he turned to look through the dense brush of the walnut forest. Wait here, and do not follow me back to the shelter. I will be right back. Baby Ghost then took off back towards the sky tree. Han San knew something big must have gone down in with the sky tree during their absence. Otherwise, Baby Ghost would not have run off in the middle of their conversation. Is the tree in the midst of reviving? Han Sen also ran towards the sky tree. He had waited a long time for this opportunity, so he wasn't going to miss it. Everything seemed fine in the tree, though, as spirits and creatures were performing their labor duties like normal. Dry Bone King quickly ran over to see Han San, though, and promptly brought him up to the higher floors. Mr. Immortal has finished his practice. He has summoned us to the Immortal Hall. Where have you been? Dry Bone King asked as he pulled on Han San to move quicker. Han San was shocked. If Immortal Emperor was becoming a reality, then that meant the tree was ready to spring back to life. Han San removed the dragon blood ring from his finger. If Immortal Emperor truly was Sky King, he'd recognize Dragon King right away. Han San and Dry Bone King arrived at the Immortal Hall. Han San was eager to see what Immortal Emperor looked like. Ching Jun and Ghost Eye were there, as well. When Baby Ghost saw Han San, a visible look of surprise came over his face. Han San waved at him cheekily and then went to sit down. Han San looked over towards the primary seat of the table, which was currently empty. Immortal Emperor had yet to arrive. No one spoke during the wait, not even the oh so talkative Ghost Eye. It just sat where it was taking part in the eerie silence. Ching Jun was the one who sat nearest the primary seat, and she looked at Han Sen as if she were looking at a dead man. Han Sen didn't care very much what she may have been thinking, though. He just sat in his seat, waiting for a mortal emperor to arrive. Katcha! The latch of the back door was lifted. The sudden sound was loud, and it shocked those in their seats. Han Sen turned to look in the direction of the noise. When his eyes fell upon immortal emperor, he was surprised. He had often wondered what the enigmatic spirit would look like, and he had come up with numerous visions and images in his head. But this spirit subverted all his expectations. Immortal Emperor looked like a peacock. The peacock was gold, with a number of multicolored ornamental eye spots decorating its plumage. It was stunning. I thought he was a spirit. Why is he a peacock? Han San mulled the appearance, as the peacock waddled its way over and took its rightful place in the primary seat. All the king's spirits and super creatures in the hall bowed before it. So Han San did the same. The peacock's eyes glanced over everyone in the hall but paused when they passed over Han San. When it was done, the peacock screeched, prompting everyone to look at it in wonder. It stretched its wings, and its eyes shot out a beam of golden light. Within that gold light, a thin shadow formed. Han San could not make out the face of whatever or whoever it was, but its mere presence there rattled his nerves. Han San saw the shadow's lips begin to move, and it looked to be speaking to Ching Jun. No one else was able to hear what was being spoken except for her, it seemed, for she nodded in answer. When the light came to an end, Ching Jun said, Yes, my emperor. The shadow nodded and faded as the light dimmed. Then, the peacock flapped its wings and flew out. After the peacock left, the king's spirits and super creatures in the hall all felt great relief. It was as if they had been holding their breaths the whole time. Ching Jun, what did Mr. Immortal tell you? Water Fairy asked. Ching Jun quietly said, Mr. Immortal is going to open the holy door. He needs a lot of sky fruit to make pills, so he wants us to gather as much as we can over the next month. A month isn't very long. 
There are still twenty-three of them to go. Do we even have enough time? Dry Bone King said. We will have to form the paths, too. It is best that we hurry. Delaying Mr. Immortal would be most unwise, Ching Jun said. Dry Bone's face changed. Everyone works beneath my command. I will be most cruel and unpleasant to anyone who seeks to disturb Mr. Immortal's business, Ching Jun said. I don't want to delay anything, but I have to eat walnuts every three days. If I don't, I cannot participate in the work, Han San said. Ching Jun said, Life water can keep you in your current state, child. There is no need for you to exit. I don't have any life water, Han Sen then said, as cover for not wanting to consume it due to the possible consequences they could result in. Ching Jun expected Han San to say this, though, so she gave everyone a bottle of the stuff. Then, she said, everyone is given 10 drops of life water as a bonus. If we finish the job within the allotted month, we'll get 20 more as a reward. Everyone was delighted to hear this. They accepted the life water merrily, thanking the emperor for the gracious gift. Han Sen accepted the bottle and listened to Ching Jun's work instructions. Ching Jun took them straight over to the sky fruit. The spirits and creatures were supposed to create the paths that led to them, but now they had to chip in and make their own due to the rush. Ching Jun put everyone in charge of two sky fruit. If things go according to plan, the tree will indeed see a revival in the next month, Dragon King said. Han San had re-equipped the ring and was consulting with him. Is there any way we might be able to muck up his plans? Han San sighed. Dragon King said, I don't think so. The spirits and super creatures have all consumed too much life water. They are beyond saving, and the sky tree is sure to absorb them all. Unless you can cut down the sky tree, it is hopeless. Not even Sky King himself could make a comeback after that. Han Sin throve Nid. He had yet to save Cho Ping, and he had just learned about Baby Ghost being a vice leader of Blood Legion. It would be a proper shame if the latter died. Just as Han San was thinking about Baby Ghost, Baby Ghost was actually approaching him. Didn't I tell you not to return? Baby Ghost looked ugly, uglier than usual. Give it a rest, will you? You're like a broken record. I'm fine where I am, okay? Han Sen sighed. If it wasn't for that relic you showed me, I wouldn't care about you one bit. Baby Ghost paused for a moment, before going on to say, But for you to come back at this time, it is as good as suicide. Why? Han Sen asked. Baby Ghost then said, Honestly? Aside from Ching Jun and me, you're all going to die here. Why? Han Sen was surprised by this, and it seemed as if Baby Ghost knew a thing or two about what was going on. Baby Ghost said, You don't need to know the specifics. You are going to die. So give me the relic and speak your last words. Ah, is this about a mortal emperor sacrificing the whole tree? That's old news, Hansen said. Baby Ghost looked as if he'd swallowed a bug, and in utter shock, he gasped, How do you know about that? Hansen smiled and looked coy. He didn't answer him, and instead said, You don't need to know the specifics, but tell me. What makes you think you and Ching Jun will be spared? Baby Ghost was still in shock over the fact Han Sen knew what was going on, and he answered, Ching Jun is a mortal emperor's daughter. And me? I'm the one who concocted this scheme. Hmm, I see. So, have you been avoiding the consumption of life water? Han Sen asked. What does the life water have to do with anything? Baby Ghost asked, but right after, his mind seemed to get snagged on a sudden, disturbing thought. Whoever has been drinking the life water will be sacrificed. There's no particular discrimination, as it's a catch-all type of thing. Han San was extra smug. Rubbing it in, he could tell Baby Ghost had been drinking the life water. Baby Ghost's facial expression was beyond distraught, and so he said, Impossible. Ching Jun has been using life water as well. Who has been feeding you these lies? Well, let me ask you. Have you been told how these sacrifices are to be, well, sacrificed? Han Sin asked. Baby Ghost looked clueless. He wished to speak, but he seemed to be struggling to force out words. His face turned green at the sudden turn of events, and all his throat could end up spitting out were the words, H have I been tear tricked? After that Baby Ghost turned to run, but Han Sun stopped him. If you're going to consult the Emperor with this, you're a dead baby. 
Tell me about the relationship between Han Jingji and Blood Legion, Han San told him. Baby Ghost said, I don't fully believe your forked tongue. Not yet, leastways. I must go and confirm something. No. You tell me what I want to know now. Hansen didn't think Baby Ghost would ever come back. Once he left, Baby Ghost then answered, Gah, but it's a long story. The short version is, something huge happened within the Legion. We needed help. Han Jingji was then kidnapped by Blood Legion forces. Han San was shocked. The revelations were coming thick and fast. There was a connection between Han Jingji and Blood Legion, but the way it came about was very unexpected. Han Jingji had actually been the victim of kidnapping. Han Sen wished to ask more, but Baby Ghost was already gone. Han Jingji was kidnapped by Blood Legion forces? That must mean he was there with them for some time, in some way or another. That might also mean he learned much about the organization, including the Nine Life Cat. But why was he kidnapped? Why did they need to do that? Did they kidnap just anyone? Did it happen before or after he visited that realm with the maybe a god maybe a demon being? Hansen's mind was now racked with countless more questions. Hansen hoped Baby Ghost wouldn't be killed, so he could ask the spirit a bunch more questions. Hansen was not too worried what he might do though. If Hansen was attacked and had to make an escape, he believed he could do so with the aid of Little Angel. A few days later, Ching Jun came looking for Han San. Han San was surprised to see her, and when she approached, she asked, You didn't drink the life water you were given? Nope, Han San answered simply. Good. Ching Jun handed something to Han San, turned around, and left as swiftly as she appeared. Han San wasn't sure why she had just done what she did, and truthfully, he fancied asking her a few questions. It seemed like Baby Ghost had told Ching Jun what Han San had told him. She had given Han San a small bottle with a piece of paper attached. The paper said the contract on Chiu Ping had been forfeit. Han San had long wondered how he might get Ching Jun to let Chiu Ping go free, and now, it had been done without any effort on his part. Han San was delighted, so he left the work site. He wanted to visit Chiu Ping and guide him out. Han San thought someone might stop him, but no one did. He scanned the nearby area and then realized the king's spirits and super creatures were all gone. Han San returned to the fourth floor without issue and escorted Chiu Ping out of the tree. When Han San returned to the underground shelter with him, he noticed all the walnut trees in the forest were dying. Baby Ghost must have done something to make the sky tree revive even sooner. Dragon King exclaimed. Han San frowned and flew back towards the sky tree. As he was returning, he saw countless creatures writhing on the forest floor in agony. You could see their life forces being pulled from their bodies, heading for the tree that contained immortal shelter. Green sprouts began to grow from their corpses, becoming vines that absorbed their flesh. Seeing all the creatures become fertilizer, Han San could not help but think, Dragon King was right. Creatures that have consumed walnuts or life water are being absorbed no matter where they are. Before Hansen arrived back, though, a scary presence startled him on the approach. A black and red tree was growing incredibly quickly, heading high up into the clouds. There was this a menacing spire in the land now, surrounded by countless dried-up trees and creature corpses. Even the ground and earth were being sucked dry of life, transforming the area into an apocalyptic hellscape. Hansen flew towards the sky tree as fast as he could. He knew he couldn't stop what was happening, but he hoped he could pick up a few goodies at the very least. Perhaps he'd even be able to kill a few of the super creatures and take their life geno essences from Sky King. The sky tree was growing at an alarming rate. The red and black bark was cracking and beginning to peel. Countless creatures tried to scramble out of the cracks that webbed the tree. As the tree grew and grew, the creatures started to return to their original size. There were tigers, titans, and birds, every creature imaginable, all trying to make an escape. But when they made it out, their bodies began to tear apart. Vines shot out from beneath their skin, ravaging their flesh and tangling them up. This happened to those that were airborne as well, and they rained down to the ground in pieces. The roots of the tree then began to lift themselves up and escape the ground that kept them in place. Like hungry tentacles, the roots grabbed the corpses of fallen creatures and drained them of their life force. The cracks across the tree began to heal, 
crushing creatures that sought to escape from them. The tree was slowly being drenched in blood, making for a terrible sight. A lot of creatures were unable to exit in time. For those that weren't crushed by the devilish lumber, they were instead ripped apart by the phantom vines that had been slumbering inside their bodies. The place was like a forested depiction of hell, and just as Han San thought it would be best if he left, a light appeared. The light was Ching Jun. Her life force was draining, as green sprouts began to pop up over her body. Get the cruel bottle. Ching Jun was not doing well, evidently. As she approached Han San, she did so with wobbling movements. She was in great pain and suffering, that much was clear. Why? What is it? Hansen asked, but he did not delay in retrieving the jade bottle she had recently given him. Ching Jun gritted her teeth and knelt in front of Han Senator. She placed her right hand on her chest and said, I, Ching Jun, am willing to submit and offer absolute loyalty to a new master. I will become a faithful servant from now until eternity. After that, her forehead gleamed with a spirit stone. Needless to say, Han San was in shock that Ching Jun, of all spirits, was willing to obey him. Han San held her spirit stone in his hand. It shone brightly before becoming one with Ching Jun again. Ching Jun might have become Han San's spirit, but the green sprouts were still on her. Open the bottle and let me in. King Yun shouted. How do I open it? Han San asked. He had tried to open the cruel bottle before, but he was unable to. He thought it was very strange of her to give him a bottle, but at least now it was starting to make sense. Hansen touched the bottle to try to open it again, but this time, it opened immediately. Hansen realized he could only use it once a contract with the spirit that gave it had been signed. After the bottle was opened, Ching Jun transformed into a pellet of bright light. Then, she tucked herself inside it. As Hansen wondered why Ching Jun was doing this, another light appeared. This time, it was Water Fairy. Water Fairy's body was transparent, and you could see the sprouts manifesting inside her watery body. Her body bubbled and boiled, and if this was to continue, it'd only be a matter of time before she evaporated out of existence. She shouted, Help! Then she raced into the bottle alongside Ching Jun. Hansen peered at Ching Jun and the Water Fairy inside the bottle side by side, and noticed now that the sprouts had stopped growing on and within them. They were all gone. Han San was delighted. Learning this treasure he had been given could negate the dark powers of the sky tree. Han San, help. Han San heard someone call out his name. He turned to see a number of vines crawling through the air like a webbed net. A second later, they were cut down to the ground. A mound of bones had given them a shave, and when Han San's eyes came to focus, he saw Dry Bone King doing battle. Hansen flew over towards him, bottle in hand. As he pointed it at Dry Bone King, he asked, Can you come inside? Dry Bone King spared no time in diving into the purifying comfort of the cruel bottle. Then, looking up, Hansen saw a nine-headed creature soar through the sky, screeching in pain. It was headed straight for him. But before Hansen could do anything for it, the heads began to separate from its body as vines ravaged the poor beast. Its life force was all going to the tree. When the body hit the ground, roots sprang out of the earth and dragged it underground. Hansen felt it was a great shame and waste. Turning around again, though, Hansen saw Ghost Eye becoming consumed by the hungry, lecherous vines. He was going to pull out his phoenix sword and do what he could to help. But before Hansen could do anything, Ghost I saw the bottle and dived right into it. I'm here to get easy kills. Why am I inadvertently saving these things? Hansen thought, but then he noticed something. It didn't seem like anything could exit the bottle without his explicit permission. The sound of an explosion rang through the forest. A rock giant was headed Hansen's way, covered in vines like angry moss. The sturdy golem was able to defy their attempts to tear it apart, though, and as expected, before the vines could do what they wished to, the rock giant jumped inside the cruel bottle. Hansen was made up, and he thought to himself, Hmm, perhaps this is not all bad. Give me a few more, and I'll have myself a personal army. In the sky, the hellbird raged with great curtains of fire that smoked the skies and turned them black. Try as it might, 
it was unable to incinerate the vines that sought to ravage its fiery body. The green vines had put a strain on it and quelled the ferocity of its flames. The wretched, lecherous vines did not fear anything. The vines lashed the bird whose flesh they were born from, and they swayed like manic green firelicks of their own. Eventually, they proved too much, and they tore the bird apart. The bird had hoped to reach Han San and his bottle, and it had been rapidly descending as all this unfolded. Unfortunately, it was too late. The only thing to reach the ground was a rain of fleshy chunks and blood-stained feathers. It was another meal for the sky tree. Han San saw a giant flower get torn apart at the entrance to the sky tree. The other super creatures had all been too late for Han San to save, and they all ended up as food for the sky tree. Where is baby ghost? Han San asked as he searched amidst the ruin, thinking of all the questions he still wanted to ask. The walnut forest was a vile hellscape now, painted dark with the blood of spirits and creatures. Hansen asked Ching Jun, who was in the cruel bottle, where is baby ghost? Why did he not exit alongside you? We got separated. He was supposed to be here, Ching Jun said. Hansen asked the water fairy if she had seen him, but she said she had not seen him either. Hansen thought this was boding poorly for baby ghost. His failure to escape didn't make sense though. Han San had informed him about the true nature of the conspiracy surrounding the operations of a mortal shelter, so he should have been among the first to get out. Han San could no longer find the entrance to the sky tree, as the original tree hole was now filled up. There was no other way inside. But then, a scream sounded in the sky. Looking up, Han San saw a gold peacock descending from atop the tree. A person was on top of the peacock a figure with gold-colored hair adorned with a crown. The man's simple aura was one of immense power, and Han Sun felt it was comparable to Xiang Yin. Is that Sky King? The man was incredibly handsome. His beauty and strength transcended that which seemed achievable by humans, and one could have easily mistaken him for a god of sorts. That's him, Dragon King said. The gold peacock landed near Han Senator. The man's eyes gleamed with the color of gold, but they seemed empty and devoid of emotion. Leave them, and I'll grant you a swift and merciful death, Sky King said. His eyes were callous pits of false holiness, and they saw through Han Sin as if it was a strain to even acknowledge his existence. Of course, a greedy person such as Han San was not willing to hand over his goodies, even if it meant he'd get away scot-free. Now was the perfect time to run, he believed. But still, not knowing the fate of Baby Ghost pained him. Ultimately, he ended up thinking the spirit might have just remained inside the Sky Tree to die. Han Sen thought about fighting Sky King, but now that the Sky Tree had been revived and his power might have been restored, it wasn't worth trying. He couldn't be sure he had what it took to deal with a foe such as that. Plus, if Han Sen was truly able to defeat Sky King, he'd just respawn back in the Sky Tree. Han San would have to destroy the tree itself to ensure he had dealt with Sky King for good. Han Sen's phoenix sword had only been able to deal a minor scratch on the tree's bark. And that was before, when it was supposedly dead. He wagered he'd probably be unable to do anything to it now, in its current state. Earlier, when the bark of the tree fell off, it was replaced with new layers of bark. This bark was like burning, red hot steel. It looked like a frightening monument fresh from the forges of hell. It was an unsettling sight, for sure. Sky King wasn't going to let Han San run off with so much of the tree's food, though. The gold peacock inflated itself like a balloon, and it became so bloated it blocked half of the sky. The gold peacock inhaled air in front of Han San, whipping up a frenzied suction. It sought to consume Han San in the bottle. Han San gritted his teeth and summoned disloyal night. Then he activated Super King Spirit Mode. He summoned a coin in his hand, and then fired a multitude of them at the peacock. Although they were only coins, super creatures never seemed to have what was necessary to overcome Super King Spirit Mode. Hansen always prevailed in that form. The peacock, seeing the coins coming towards it, stopped sucking. With its mouth, it chomped a number of the coins to break them and their power. Disloyal Knight used its halo to dye the peacock and Sky King, a delightfully unholy, tarnished bronze color. Then, as it very much liked to do, 
It moved toward the creature and let loose a flurry of punches. The peacock's beak struck one of its fists, knocking disloyal knight back with a mark across its gauntlet. But this was good, as Hansen took advantage of this opportunity to leap onto the peacock's back and dash before Sky King. Hansen's mighty fist, draped in a shroud of purified power, was thrown towards Sky King. Sky King watched Hansen approach, and the exact moment the fist was set to collide with his face, he moved. Hansen saw Sky King's arm, which was clad in gold armor, move. Then, he felt a sickly power meet with his chest. It felt as if he had gotten hit by a train. When Hansen hit the ground, he formed a 50-meter deep hole. Blurk. Hansen coughed blood from his mouth, and he thought to himself, Dragon King. I thought you said Sky King needs the Sky Tree to achieve the power of an emperor. Why is he this strong already? He must already be an emperor, one who has opened Tenjin locks. He must be as powerful as Xiang Yin. How could this asterisk shoal become an emperor? Tenjin locks open? No way. The Sky Tree hasn't even fully recovered yet, Dragon King said. Pang. Sky King leaped down, his stomp creating a deep hole in the ground. You're the asterisk shoal right now. Ugh, why did I ever trust you? Han San used his phoenix techniques to dodge Sky King, who was going to try to stomp on him next. He was going to attempt another escape. But suddenly, many golden palaces began to fall from the sky. And as they clobbered the area all around, in great ruin and catastrophe, Han San felt as if he had stumbled into a post-apocalyptic landscape left to the faint whispers of dust and echoes. Whoa, he is an emperor. This is his sky palace technique. It's fueled by a space element. Unless we kill him, we're trapped. Dragon King cried aloud. Han Sen's phoenix techniques were incredibly quick, and he bobbed and weaved between the tumbling palaces that fell to break the landscape with great speed. But it seemed as if there was no end to them, and no matter how far he went, it felt as they were being drawn to him. Is there any way for us to stop it? Hansen knew there was no point in being angry with Dragon King now. They were both in a dire situation, and cooperation would yield the best results. Hansen looked behind him and saw Sky King fast approaching. Each of his footsteps was painting the ground gold as he went. Sky King spared no time in throwing a punch towards Hansen. Hansen fell back, trying to dodge the strike, but he felt as if his speed was slower than it ought to have been. He discovered it wasn't that his speed had slowed down. It was the dimension itself that had been stretched for him. The distances were stretched to become ten times longer. So Han San was not evading any slower, he was just having to travel further. Sky King's punch might have looked very slow, but he could transcend the warping of the dimension and make it seem incredibly quick. With this play on space, Han San was unable to dodge the strike. He had no choice but to try and meet Sky King's fist with his own. Han San's fingers cracked in the collision and it felt as if they were on the precipice of breaking. The power of the fist he went up against hurled him backwards. Ever since obtaining Super King Spirit Mode, things had never been so dire for Han Senator rarely was he placed in a situation so dangerous that he could not escape. Boom! Han Sen went flying back, crashing into the sturdy walls of a golden palace. The building began to collapse, and Han Sen shook his head, slinging blood over the remaining walls. Before he could get up, though, Sky King was already upon him. He was primed, ready to deliver another cruel punch. What are you doing? Run! Dragon King exclaimed. But Han Sen's perception of reality had been warped, as the dimension he inhabited was altered. He was unable to dodge. But suddenly, a holy beacon of light burst forth from Han Sen's forehead. A figure appeared, wielding a transparent greatsword. It was a woman with blonde wavy hair and white wings. Immediately, she went to strike Sky King. Young. Sky King's fist had met its match. The power was negated, but the strength still managed to knock Little Angel away. She crashed into Han Sin, sending them both flying backwards even further. Run. Dragon King called out. Shut up. Han Sin silenced the dragon blood ring, feeling like an idiot for having trusted Dragon King so much. Little Angel had the strength of a Super King spirit, but she was not as strong as an emperor. Seeing Sky King approach, Han Sen kicked up a coin fall to stop him. 
Owing to its suppressive abilities, they were both able to escape and recompose themselves. But the coins, as they landed on Sky King, didn't actually seem to do much. They merely dropped on him like actual raindrops, doing little to slow him down. Hansen had figured this might be the case, but he did not have the time to build up a saving money hit. Sky King was able to command the very dimension they inhabited and bend it to his will. If Hansen's Super King spirit had opened Tinjin locks, he might have been able to fight him, but alas, that was not the case. Hansen and Little Angel waged war against their foe, each letting out a flurry of punches and sword strikes. As valiant as it sounded, the reality of their battle was not half as grand. Sky King was able to use one hand to block each of their attacks, and he was able to do so with no trouble or strain. Disloyal Knight, in the meantime, was still engaged with the Golden Peacock. His armor had been severely damaged by this point, and he was bleeding continuously. Pang! Han San felt as if he ought to have been able to block the next punch to come his way, but again, the dimension was given a shake. The punch effortlessly landed upon his chest again. Hansen was sent flying. Not only did he break a number of palaces, but he also broke a few ribs. Little Angel could not dodge the punch she was delivered, either. That sent her flying backwards, too. Hansen went to catch Little Angel, and as he did, he thought about escaping by using his night cloak. After moving forward to catch Little Angel, she paused in his arms. Then, she turned around and kissed Han San upon the lips. I know you love me, but let's save this for a more appropriate time. Han San tried to mask his surprise. But the moment they kissed, Little Angel became a figure that was formed entirely of white light. Then, she entered Han San's body and became one with him. Han San felt rejuvenated, as if he had been gifted a vast amount of power, the likes of which he never thought he'd be able to wield. His head was dressed with a gold halo ring, while his back sprouted wide angel wings. Then, a new weapon spawned in his hand, the transparent greatsword. Roar! Han San roared to the skies as a new power surged through his being. It combined with his cells to make changes to his body. Katcha! Han San felt as if his body had been freed from the clutches of chains he never knew existed. The holy light enveloped Han San's entire body wings, and greatsword. He felt as if he was submerged beneath water, floating free. Sky King warped the dimension again and threw a punch with the illusion of near-teleportation levels of speed. Seeing another punch head his way, Han San readied his greatsword. But even though the fist was only a meter away, it felt like it was miles away. In the next second, he was swinging his greatsword as if it was weightless. It cut through the twisted, perverse dimension and struck Sky King's wrecking fist. It was too late for Sky King to pull back, as half of his fist was lopped off. Sky King bled profusely from his fist, which made him reel back aghast. He couldn't believe what had just happened, and truth be told, neither could Hansan. But Hansan was happy at the sudden turning of the tides. Little Angel had helped Hansan open his tenth gene lock for Super King Spirit. Now, Han San could not be suppressed by the warping of dimensions. Han San wasn't yet sure about the extent of his power with ten gene locks open. He didn't exactly have the opportunity to thoroughly test it due to the current circumstances. Neither did he know if this was a permanent opening of a gene lock and if it would remain open if Little Angel exited his body. Regardless, Han San now had what it took to fight back. Victory did not seem impossible now and so he had to focus on ending the current threat. Hansen flapped his wings. In a flash of holy light, he teleported directly before Sky King. Sky King frowned and raised a golden palace in response. It was a few hundred meters away to begin with, but now it had blinked forth to separate the two. But Hansen was able to flap his wings again, and with the great sword, he sliced through the new distortion of the dimension. Then, Hansen cut through the palace. Sky King did not expect his Sky Palace to prove ineffective in protecting him from Han Senator. He had not expected the tables to turn so quickly and turn so dramatically, and Sky King now wanted to flee and return to the safety and comfort of his tree. Sky King was incredibly fast and agile, and with his abilities of dimension distortion, he was able to manipulate his movement so that one step could account for a thousand meters. 
but Han Sin flapped his wings again. Immediately, he was able to catch up with Sky King so he could swing his sword and strike him down. Sky King frowned, and he wasn't going to make things that easy. He turned, holding up a wooden spear that looked like the sky tree. Young. The transparent greatsword struck the spear and left a deep cleft in it. Han Sen was even happier now. He drew the phoenix sword in one hand, while transparent greatsword remained in the other. Then, he unleashed a barrage of strikes against Sky King. Sky King was able to keep his spear raised in an attempt to block the attacks, but the dual-wielding barrage proved too much. The shockwaves generated by Han Sen's flurry of attacks soon began to collapse and devastate the golden palaces that littered the ruined landscape. Young. Sky King's spear was no longer able to withstand the attacks, and it eventually broke in two. Hansen flew around behind Sky King and cut his face. Sky King's desperate bid to flee now escalated. With a wretched face of disgust, he turned towards the tree and took off. But Hansen was no longer afraid of anything, now that he was imbued with the holy light. With the glowing halo, too, he flapped his wings and followed Sky King wherever he went. Sky King bled, and the skies were dyed red, as if in response. Sky King's blood began to cascade like rainfall. It shocked Sky King, and his bleeding face robbed him of any intention he had to fight back. All he wanted to do now was return to his tree and cower within. Han Sen did not relent in his chase, and he smirked at seeing how much Sky King's behavior had changed. All his cockiness had vanished. He got in another strike, and this time, Hansen managed to not only cut Sky King's crown in two, but also give him a less than fashionable haircut. The gold armor Sky King wore was all broken, and it had turned the color of rusted, aged steel. His wounds leaked blood like broken faucets. Sky King flew inside the tree and closed himself inside. Hansen was determined not to allow this to stop him, though. He struck the tree once, creating a dozen meter long mark across the surface of the tree. Unfortunately, it didn't do much. The tree seemed able to heal itself, too. So Han Sen began striking the tree fiercely. He hoped he could keep up the DPS to outpace the healing. And all the while, Sky King was inside, cowering in fear over his nemesis. As Han Sen excitedly fought against the bark of the tree, it soon revealed itself to be a futile endeavor. But Han Sen suddenly smiled in the remembrance of something. He turned around and went after the golden peacock. The golden peacock wasn't expecting Han Sun back, and it really wasn't expecting his newfound strength. With its beak, it attempted to block Han Sin's greatsword. Katcha! The gold peacock was no match, and it was promptly cut in half. Super creature sky peacock killed. Beast soul gained. The flesh of this creature is inedible, but you may harvest its life geno essence. Consume its life geno essence to gain zero to ten super geno points randomly. Han Sen grabbed the yellow life geno essence from its body and put disloyal knight back inside the sea of soul. Then, he returned to the underground shelter. Han Sen's super king spirit mode could last one hour, but after combining with little angel, he felt drained of all energy within the space of a few minutes. As Han Sen flew back home, little angel departed and returned to the Sea of Soul looking equally tired and drained of energy. Hansen was feeling worse than usual. He was in very poor condition, and he had to make use of his blood demon dragon wings to return home. He couldn't even fly home by himself. He was so weak. While Hansen was flying back, someone called out his name. When he turned around to take a look, he saw an eight-year-old child squirming and writhing around on the ground as if in pain. Baby ghost? Hansen was surprised to see him there. He was glad he was alive and had not been killed. He didn't have any green sproutlings popping up all over him, but there was definitely something wrong with him. He used to have the face of a child, but now he was a child completely. The head was still frighteningly large, however. His life force was weak, almost as weak as a newly spawned golden growler. What happened to you? Hansen asked. Talk later. For now, we should get moving. Baby Ghost clearly did not know Sky King had returned to the tree. Hansen grabbed Baby Ghost and returned to the underground shelter with him. Then, he ordered Moment Queen to move the shelter. Little Angel and Hansen were weak, and in their current state, 
they no longer had the ability to combine together and fight Sky King. As such, they decided the best course of action was to leave. Han San spoke to Baby Ghost and asked, I thought you went looking for Sky King after I told you the truth of matters. What happened to you? Baby Ghost answered, I told Ching Jun, and we only went and spoke to the others. We didn't consult Sky King, but we were going to. But before the opportunity arose, the tree began to revive. Okay, and what happened to you? Han Sin asked. Baby Ghost explained, Fortunately for me, I had Ghost Baby to escape. I abandoned my vessel and sacrificed a portion of my spirit stone to survive. I say fortunately loosely, as now I'm only a shadow of what I once was. My progress has been wiped. I don't even have a single gene lock open. Just being alive is enough, baby ghost. Even if you're weak, being alive is more than worth the sacrifice. Han San smiled softly to comfort him. Ching Jun was in even worse condition though. Those that had escaped into the cruel bottle were all alive, but they were stuck inside the bottle and unable to exit. If they left the confines of the bottle, the sky tree would finish the job and absorb them. Being unable to get rid of the vines meant they'd possibly be stuck inside the bottle forever. The cruel bottle was like a room that operated independently to everything else, but it had to be sealed and had to remain sealed. It could not be opened, lest the sky tree finish what it had already started. Aside from destroying the sky tree, Hansen had no clue how he might proceed. There didn't seem to be any other way Hansen could remove the vines. The creatures and spirits had each consumed too much life water, too, so the core of a sky fruit would be largely ineffective. In the meantime, though, Hansen decided to return to the Alliance. Little Angel and Hansen were both still too weak, and for the time being, they wouldn't even have the strength to tackle a super creature. Han San rested there for two days, and after that, he started refining the life geno essence of the sky peacock. Life geno essence absorbed, super geno points, plus one. Han San was delighted, hearing the announcement chime more than once. In total, the life geno essence provided him four points in total. Super creatures in the third god's sanctuary were different. Some could give eight to nine super geno points, whereas others could only give three to four. Han San guessed it had something to do with the generation of a super creature, but he hadn't had much time to test and prove such theories. Sky Peacock was a Mount Beast soul, and Han San considered it to be fairly useless. When Han San's condition and health improved, he didn't jump back to start hunting super creatures again. He realized he still needed a lot more strength to fight an emperor, though. He had to be careful where he next ventured. If he combined powers with Little Angel, the cooldown period was extreme. The boost didn't last very long, either, so he knew he couldn't rely on that trick very often. It had to be used as a last resort. What Han San wanted to do most right now was research the vines and find a way in which he might remove them without destroying the sky tree. If he saved all the creatures and spirits inside, they'd all owe him one, and they might end up following him. If that was true, he'd more than have what it took to take down a king class shelter. Dragon King gave Hansen a number of ideas, but Hansen didn't dwell on many of them. He didn't think he should trust Dragon King as much, anymore. That being said, Hansen understood Dragon King never wanted to bring harm to him. Dragon King had made a simple blunder, and the results of his time in a mortal shelter did not come about through some evil machination or scheme the spirit had hatched, as Moment Queen might do. After all, if something bad happened to Hansen and he was killed, that would be game over for Dragon King, too. So, more than anything, Hansen had just called Dragon King's overall intelligence into question. It boggled Hansen's mind how someone so dumb might have once been an emperor. Please have faith in me. I have a plan. This could really work. Dragon King felt sorry for what had happened and desperately wanted to get back into Hansen's good books. Dragon King was relying on Hansen to find him a vessel, after all. The Azura Sutra can get rid of those vines, he said, but Han San struggled to believe it. If you practice the Azura Sutra, you can fix them. Back then, Dragon King realized he had said something he should not have mentioned. Back then what? Han Sin asked. Dragon King knew, if he didn't play his cards right and only do good for Han Sin, he'd be trapped in the ring for all eternity. Azura was one of the generals who beat Sky King. 
His Azura Sutra is bad for the tree, but you would need to find a spirit of that bloodline to perform it, Dragon King said. Didn't you say Sky King was an emperor? An ancient devil emperor beat Sky King himself? So Azura was just a general, but he was able to defeat Sky King, too. Han San thought there were inconsistencies in the spirit's tales, and he wasn't sure whether or not he should give Dragon King the benefit of the doubt. But Dragon King then explained, Folk of the Azura bloodline can defeat Sky King. Besides, he betrayed Mr. Ancient Devil. You remember Devil's Realm and Ancient Devil Shelter, don't you? That was the consequence of his betrayal.